John, you know, we've we've talked we've heard quite a bit about um, a thing called a Cromery generator. Mm -hmm. This has happened way back 10, 20 years, and I don't believe it's anything to do with the monopole motor. So maybe you'd like to talk about the. No, Crom there's quite a difference between the two motors, and if I can get around to the blackboard, I'll just put a simplified drawing of uh, the Cromery converter. Oh. Now the chrome ray converter is uh, basically a flux gate generator and uh, you can see here that if you come around here you can see here that the armature is the thing that's spinning in between these gates see it's in a magnetic lock here see it doesn't want to leave the lock so this is a chrome ray generator yes this is a chrome ray generator and this is one that worked Ooh. One that worked very well and, and is wound correctly. Now, a Cromway generator is basically made up like this. So notice right away, it is a north pole here, a south pole here, a north pole here, and a south pole here. And what's in between here is an iron bar and an iron bar here. And then a non-magnetic shaft. And I must stress this to everybody. This is a non-magnetic shaft, meaning that the shaft is aluminum, it's brass, or it's stainless steel non-magnetic. And it's the only way that you can get this generator to work correctly. So what's on the shaft in the center here are two slip rings. And these are for brushes. So we'll just draw a little brush here and to wire out. And a little brush here and a way out. And the coil is made up where the coil comes in this way and stops and then comes in this way. And then see it's series down to the next coil. Stops. comes out and goes to this slip ring. So it's four independent coils, meaning that this is one pole, this is one pole, but it's on the same iron bar. This is a coil, this is a coil, this is a coil, and this is a coil. And these two are series. It's a series arrangement, see it? So basically what happens is this is this is completely charged. The magnetic flux has got these in a complete shorted condition. What does that mean, shorted condition? Well it means that it's zero. Okay. It's zero in here zero in here. In other words, the magnetic field's completely contained. And when you turn this rotor, you're going to break the magnetic lock and it's going to discharge. So it's char in a charged condition right now. And the minute that the rotor breaks this lock, it discharges in the in the rotor, which is this portion right here. Okay, okay so the problem with the patent was that the, who, me, the who, problem who, with the Cromray patent on who, this who's, whose patent was it? Cromray, Raymond Cromray. And and who is Raymond Cromray? He was the inventor of this uh, Cromray converter. And and he. I don't have the patent, so I can't tell you the exact year, but. It's way out of date. 
Was this the guy that was a professor? Yes, okay. at the university. And there's quite an interesting story to this guy because I wanted to rebuild the thing, and so I made a long distance call. I found I found the number through a friend, and I called, and the person at the other end of the phone who said that it was his wife uh, said to me on the phone, I don't give a damn what you do with it. So I just took it to mean that nobody cared. So I rebuilt the whole machine and found all the problems with the with the coil, with the arrangement, so that it worked correctly when we got down. And one of the one of the uh, little unique features of the chrome ray converter is that under load it accelerates, hmm. so that the current actually goes down instead of upward. And so uh, I'll get a current meter in line real quick here. So bear with me just a second. I'll just get something that's that's close here. And of course, we're not running the machine right at this instant, but I'm showing you that the zero amps is here, and this could be as high as 30 here and 60 over here. So I'm just putting a meter that we can get an indication on there. So anyway, uh, there was some uh, mysterious things behind this in that why did it never get out into the marketplace it was so efficient? That's because 120% um, is, yes, it's over unity, but the problem is it's not at an industrial level. For something to be uh, considered really free energy device, it has to be 300% or over. And you know this how? I know this how because I was told this by the scientists who work for government laboratories. So, having a device that's COP1 is not going to get you on the list. Because you have to have a COP of, say, 3 to four. Or above. Or above. Yeah. And otherwise, it's just like they told uh, Bruce De Palma, if it would have been over Unity, we would have just locked up the whole lab. So it has to be at this level. So the max we could get out of this machine here would be 180%. Which is damn good because you, you can do a lot with that. You can recharge its batteries, you put it back to its battery, everything, without affecting the machine whatsoever. So let's go ahead and run this machine real quick and so you can see what it sounds like and uh, we'll get into a little bit behind this. Now, uh, one other thing before we do this is I'm going to make this point that um, in the, this machine, um, what we have drawn here, the converter would be depicted like this with two lines and then out to your loads. Which are lights. Now one of the ways to test this machine, this uh, G field. We call it a G field because it stresses the gravity field. And when this is uh, running, the pole pieces can uh, get hot, but it'll be blowing out cold air because it's sort of like a ma magnetic refrigeration when this is taking place. So the machine doesn't need any kind of coal cooling and it doesn't need any kind of really special pole pieces in here because they can take that. 
The point is, we'll be running at 100, about 180 percent when we short this machine down, and um, we can run some light bulbs if you want to run a light bulb. It's not going to run it very bright because it's uh, not that high a voltage. But let's go ahead and run it and show them for a second. You can see our current there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to short the machine out. And of course you can hear it speed up. Now what we'll do is tell it to go back across its battery. And it speeds up. Okay. Of course this isn't very sensitive but it actually moved back a little bit there, see? Then we can charge this other battery. And now feel the air here. Right here. Right. It's going to get colder. It's also charging, the, charging this battery really good right now. Yeah. Yeah. Look where it's got this battery. And watch when I take it off. Look at the battery. It bounces right up to 13 volts. Now, uh, feel the air now here, right here. Yeah, watch. Now feel the pole piece in there. The end of the pole piece. Wait, this end. Doing? The end. It's hot. Hot, yeah. It's quite hot. Yeah. Yes, it is. So, so, so where is the cold coming from? The negative energy that it's sucking from the vacuum because the G field the cold air is coming from the negative end in that the G-field creates a vortex. When it breaks this magnetic lock, now the mistake that everybody makes with the G-field generator or a chrome ray converter is that they when you tell them they think that it doesn't make any difference here that this is a non-magnetic shaft but it's very it's stated in the patent and it's been stated over 250 times by me that this shaft has to be a non-magnetic material because if this is a magnetic material then the flux goes like this. Oh yeah. Well, we don't want the flux to go like that because it's not a standard transformer. You have a rotating flux gate here. And these are coils, remember.
and we want the flux like this. We want it to go in this direction the first time and back the other direction when it rotates over. What do you mean when it rotates over? Well, when this, when this rotates over, this south, because right now this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. This rotates over, this is forced into a reverse pole situation where these totally reverse. In other words, the south side here now becomes the north side, and the north side here now becomes the south side, because it's rotating this direction. It's rotating this direction. So once we charge in this condition, we want to force it to discharge and then recharge very quickly in the other condition. So what is spinning is continuing, spinning in the same direction? Yes, okay. in, in, continuously in the same direction. Right. Now, what's actually happening here is, remember, these magnetic, it's zero here, it's zero here, it's zero here, and it's zero here. This is the blotch wall here and here and here. See, right straight through the non-magnetic shaft. Okay. Mm. Otherwise, the blotch wall moves over here, which is incorrect. So we could say this is the hidden secret of the Cromway converter which is no hidden secret at all if you understand the machine. You're not, it, we're not trying to make anything a secret here. We're trying to tell you how to construct it correctly if you're going to do it. So, so that, that, remember, really, that, that really is the crux of the matter right there. Yes. Once again, remember what I said with the coil. Mm -hmm. You want the energy to be sucked in through this moving gate, the blotch wall. Okay, and then you have the same thing this way. So you're forcing four blotch walls. One up here one here, one up here, and one here. But what do you mean you're forcing four blotch You're walls? forcing four of them to pump. Where are the four? I mean... Four poles. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Just point them out again on the blackboard. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Just put, it, you put your finger on them again. Can you notice? One, two, three, four. Okay, right. Okay. Right. You're forcing four of them to pump, sucking in their energy in and expelling energy. And you expel the energy through the coils and then out to the contacts. Now, you see this energy, right, in the system is basically at a zero potential, which means that if you relieve it, it's got to speed up, so let's do this again. There's no resistance then. So here, I'm going to short the machine out, right? And it's going to get cold here because the energy it has to output the cold energy, the negative energy. And you can feel it right out here, Tony. It's getting colder. See? It's outputting cold energy only in four corners. Feel. 
Over here, over here, over here, and over here. But if we turn it off now, and you touch that pole that's doing it, it's warm. Yeah, it's hot, very hot. Right. So, you see that the normal EM energy is a hot energy, and the negative energy is a cold energy. So if you ran that for a while, would it burn up the center? No, no, no it's just going to speed up. And it stays short, and it's not going to melt any wires. Now, here's an example. You see it charged the battery. The energy is safe. I'm touching it. Notice that. Speeds up. Look at the battery. It's pushing the pushing the battery right up. Now, is there any current there? That's the next question, right? Here. I'll disconnect the battery. I'll disconnect the wires. And I'll take one little wire that size right there. Can you see that little wire? Watch. There's no heat. Not burning that little wire. I'll give it up here. I'll take that little wire. Watch the spark. No current. Even hold the wire. There's no current. Is it cold or just normal temperature? Just room temperature. There you go. But look here. So we'll put it back. Pretty quick, isn't it? building the battery. Yes. What's there, right? You want to see what's there? We'll take a 100-watt light bulb. That's what's above the battery. And look, feel the light here. It's hot. Come and feel the light. Oh, you can't, Pat. Go ahead. Yeah, it's warm. 
But you have the cables and nothing's warm. See? And, it, and it's warm just on the side there, on that one spot. Negative energy forms a dot inside the light bulbs just in a certain spot. It's where my finger was. Oh, yeah. So the energy's going right to my finger and that's where the warm spot's going to be. So it's just in one spot when you're using negative energy. Yeah, it follows. Yes. The same more, more Ray talked about the same thing with one spot on the top of the light bulb. See, otherwise this machine can just, you can put it back to its own batteries. See, you got to get them right, but you can put it back to its own batteries. See? No change. Look. See, it's being sucked out right here across these poles. But go over here, brighter. Listen to the machine speeding up. So we saw there's no current in that little wire, right? All right. Okay, this is a, uh, this takes 65 watts to light this light. And what we're going to do. See? Barely any current there. And the machine speeds up and adjusts to the load of the light. But meanwhile, it's pumping out cold energy, right? Doesn't care what you do with it. Does it go through there? See the impedance. That's across the battery. Right? See what it did? Doesn't care. And that's what's known as a chrome ray converter. Very noisy machine, specially built, uh, non-magnetic shaft through the center. And there's a long story behind this. It, uh, the reason that you don't see these out there that we never continue to, uh, to build any more after that. And you can see that normal electricity is a hot thing here, Tony if you come over here and touch this motor. That's the normal. Right. 
right. and the poles right. the normal down here, but the negative is a cold energy. Right. And see, the battery is come and feel this battery is cold. Yeah, the battery is really cold. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cold. All right, I have to get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. So you, um, you, you got the permission from the... Uh, I got the permission, permission if it was his wife. If it was his wife. or, And anyway, you went ahead and... Uh, and I went ahead and developed it and found all the problems with it and worked out the four poles and... Uh, and uh, worked out that if you were really going to build this machine, I mean, we went through a lot of trouble to, uh, to build this machine. And we found out it's, it's just basically an impedance problem of this coil, adding another coil like this on the rotors. Then you cut the impedance by three. These happen to be single coil, so you'd have three here. And three here. And three here. And everything worked out in threes. And that three would come down to this three. like you see it here. And so if this was three ohms, right, when you got down here, right, you'd have zero ohms. Right. You see? So zero, zero, and actually not zero, so about four, point four, and point four. Point four, which is not a very big impedance at all. But since it's buck boost inside here. Since it's what? Buck boost. Meaning it's it's going one way one minute and one way the next minute and it keeps doing that, right? right. Um, what happens is these as these pole pieces heat, the right. negative energy that you're feeling in cold is in this vortex that's being blown out of the machine by the pole pieces right at this vortex. And that's what you're feeling is cold. Mm. The energy coming out of the machine is cold electricity because the battery got cold and the light got hot. Except for that one spot. Yeah, except for the one spot. Just the one spot on the light got hot. Yeah. And if you shorted out the wires here to a little wire that's smaller than your hair, you had no current there at all. You couldn't even burn the wire up if you had to. That's why it was such a safe electricity for generating power for a house. But that wasn't going to be allowed because it was already at 180%. Okay? and fixing the machine up with, you could take it easily to 350. By, by doing what? By, by making the geometry in, of the coils on threes like I've shown you. You could easily go to 350. So you, you were experimenting with it and you got one up to 350. Yeah, and then uh, mysteriously, mysteriously, uh, fights started to happen in the machine company. And that's what ended the production of the G-Field generator, otherwise you we mean were, in, your, in your Well, team? we built probably 150 of these generators as models. We sent them out. Most of them ended up on fireplace mantles as a talkative piece, and nobody ever knew what it was. Of course, John Sajaka knew what it was because he said that it belonged as a part on a spaceship. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what does he mean by that? What is that? 
you know, where does it go on the spaceship, John? You know, and he would never say, but mysteriously, John Sajaka was there at the time. And uh, mysteriously, the company that was making this for me fell apart. So, <laughs> I was like out in the cold. So, <laughs> so I have the only probably remaining model. Tom Bearden has a model. Steve Worst sold out a bigger model to um, some wind farm, and who knows if they're using it or not using it. And uh, 12 went to MIT, which were put in the back room and could never be studied. They bought 12 of them up when there were only 12 left. So MIT actually paid you hard cash? $500 a piece. And bought 12 of these bought generators? Bought 12 of those generators. Which were all over Unity? Close to. Yeah. And that was that for them. That was that. We also made a flywheel, which is this flywheel here, that actually went on a, another one, and the flywheel stops the cogging. Stops the what? Cogging, because there's no flywheel here. Right. And the magnetic lock makes it jerk around. Right, right, tick, right. Tick, 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 right. And once you get it up to speed with the flywheel, it's a smooth running machine, doesn't make that noise. And does it increase the uh, overunity at all? No, it just, doesn't. It do just it. mechanically, it just mechanically makes it, makes it more aesthetic. Yes. And quieter. And yeah. And Steve Worth, of course, machined this one, the four pole, which has twice the output of the regular Crom ray converter of that size. And as you can see, you can short it out, you can do whatever you have to do with it. It'll charge batteries really quick, and it, and, and it does it cold. There's, it's still cold, you know, so. So it's okay to charge batteries quick? And by the way, this was that dead battery that we depleted. Okay. And, uh... And that's cold electricity. See, it's just hot here, like a normal light. But look, we're just using this little clip lead. And it's at room temperature. So will that also get uh, hot where your thumb was? That no, 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 no. This is normal electricity okay. now. But we charged it with negative electricity. Okay. And this is that battery that we totally depleted. It's pretty bright. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Shades. And there's no way that you saw me light those lights. Right. You couldn't. You saw what this was putting in as far as light goes. Right. And it could barely light this. Well, it got brighter as time went on. It yeah. Did, yeah. Is, you say you got one up to, I think, about 380 percent. Um, 300, about over 300. Over 300. Um, could you have gotten it more if you kept experimenting with it? Probably max on that mechanical machine would have been around uh, maybe 400 percent because of the way the machines, the way it has to rotate. Right. And it was impossible to make an electrical circuit that represented it. It, it. it wouldn't work. Yeah. It had to be mechanical.